Hi and welcome learners. You are watching Eclectic English with Roma and today's module is on the poem A Photograph written by Shirley Tulson. This is the first poem from Book Hornbill prescribed for CBSE uh, class 11 CBSE students. Right? So uh, in case you are watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel for further updates and don't forget to like the video. Now let's get started. Let's know about the poetess first. She was born on May 2. Nine, in the year 1924 in England, she, was, she died at the age of 94. She was a passionate writer and influenced, she was greatly influenced by her father. She was a poet, teacher, educational journalist and an editor. She was a teacher of creative writing for adults. These are her notable works, I'll name few. Shadows in an Orchard, written in 1960, then For a Double Time and The Drovers, uh, written in 1980. Now let's talk about the title. It's The title is A Photograph, right? So uh, you must have heard uh, of the idiom, a picture paints a thousand words. It's a beautiful line, right? So uh, what does it mean? It means that a picture conveys information more effectively than words. It can convey stories, it can convey ideas, strong messages more effectively than a large number of words, right? So the person in the photograph might change in the course of time, the, but the memories attached with the photograph are eternal, all right? So we can say photographs are memories that are, that are captured and kept for lifetime purposes, all right? Now the brief introduction of the poem. This poem is tender, yet a think piece, right? Why tender? Because it's heart-touching. Uh, it will express a nostalgic relationship of, of, of a daughter, and she will talk about her mother who is no more now. And why it is jolting? Uh, because it's a, it, it gives us a harsh message, right? Uh, so the poem sends a harsh message across about, you know, how humans can never be entirely adept at accepting irreversible, irreversible separation from their loved ones, right? And this poem revolves around universal theme of loss of separation, right? And through the stock symbol of a photograph, the poet articulates the void. She is articulating the void which was left in her life after the, after the death of her mother. And she feels, um, you know, that, that void which she feels now uh, upon having made uncomfortable peace with her mother's death. Now the poetess has learned to, to be at peace because uh, somehow she had to make her understand, may make her realize that mother is no more now. Okay, so the, her, her mother is no more but the photograph makes her memories alive. Right, so we can say this poem is a melancholic note and is a nostalgic poem. Now let's understand the poem, right? So before reading it and explaining it line by line, I would just like to tell you that this poem is divided into three stanzas, right? Each stanza describes different phase, right? Different phase of life. First one describes poet's uh, mother's past, right? And at that time, poet, uh, poetess's mother was 12 years old, right? And the second phase describes uh, uh, poet's past, narrator's past, right? When she was, when her mother was a mid-aged lady, right? And the third stanza describes the phase wherein the poetess was uh, writing uh, this poem or penning uh, this poem down, right? And at that, and, and this time, in the present uh, situation, the, in the third phase, her mother is already dead for uh, around 12 years, right? Okay, now let's uh, understand, uh, now let's read the poem, right? And this poem is a tribute to her mother, right? Okay, so let's begin. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands and she the big girl some 12 years or so. Okay, so the cardboard here... Uh, it refers to a stiff photo paper, right, which was used in the pre-digital photography era to develop prints and store memories, right. And it's really very interesting to note that rather than talking about her mother directly, she is taking the help of a prop, of a photograph, right, to convey the readers that she is reminiscing about her mother. Now, reminiscing in itself is a rather nostalgia-influenced act. And this act of looking at the photograph, right, signifies that she is missing her mother terribly. 
Think about it. Isn't it a general human tendency to revisit our old pictures in our galleries when we miss a certain portion or time of our life, right? So photographs are the beautiful aids of nostalgia because each picture, no matter how candid or well-framed it is, it has a story to tell, right? So this cardboard actually is an allusion. Allusion to what? Allusion is an indirect reference to something, right? So as the cardboard, uh, you know, a cardboard has a quality which is lack of permanence right so the cardboard's lack of durability hints at the lack of permanence of human life so as the cardboard is not permanent right as the cardboard is not eternal so is the life of human beings right okay so uh, through the uh, through this um, reference to this cardboard Shirley Towson then shares with us the story behind the picture when when she was looking at the picture she she was she wanted to share with us the time when that photograph was clicked right it, it's written over here the cardboard shows me how it was that means she's talking about the stored memories inside the picture right and how it happened right and where they were where the uh, human beings in the picture uh, were at the at the time when the photograph was clicked right so she is taking us to the time when her deceased uh, mother had gone to the beach for some paddling as a young girl right in the company of her two young cousin sisters right and in the picture each one holding one of my mother's hands right so in the picture the sisters uh, uh, are each um, uh, holding her mother's hands right and the uh, the poetess's mother is the eldest one among uh, uh, among the three, among the three girls mentioned in the picture, and she is around 12 years uh, of uh, 12 years old, right? So this is the uh, poet's mother, and uh, the, these are the two cousins who are holding her mother's hand. Okay, and she's the big girl, some 12 years or so. And, uh, that is why she's the big girl. She's 12 years, and her cousins might be younger than her, right? So the poet details how each of the sisters are holding her mother's hand. This this again shows that poetess's mother had a protective aura about her right from the time when she was a child, right? And this image helps reader feel the motherly presence in the picture, right? And that is how you know the opening sentence of this poem carefully sets the mood and tone of the poem and it's overreaching subject of losing her mother yeah right now let's read further the next line all three stood still to smile through the hair at the uncle with the camera so in the second line the poet talks uh, in the tender details about how the girls uh, girls uncle had captured a mother in space and time uh, through the camera at a point when she had a lot of life ahead of her she was she was a child she was a mere child of 12 she was a child of 12 years right and the camera here becomes the object uh, becomes the interesting tool of nostalgia right and it is used to always provide food for fond remembrances by means of pictures right and uh, and three all three stood still to smile through their hair stood still is um, alliteration because consonant sound sir is repeated okay so the camera uh, here uh, they are the, the three girls are smiling at the camera through their hair so through their hair this expression is used to denote uh, how the three girls are smiling uh, uh, their widest smile a smile so brightly spread uh, across their faces that it seems to reach the strands of hair falling on the sides you can imagine how the wind uh, might be flowing um, uh, wind might be blowing on the beach and the girls would be smiling through their flowing hair right so she describes her mother's face now further in the in the next line she describes her mother's face she says a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born okay so she describes her mother's face as one which is full of sweetness instantly drawing tender emotions from the readers due to the uh, beautiful way uh, in which the poet talks uh, uh, a poet likes to think about her mother from the time when she herself hadn't come into her life see whenever we also think about our, our, our mother we always uh, we, we want to think about our mother like a very sweet and a beautiful um, you know creature on earth right so she has she she said that that was before i was born right so through the words before i was born the poet uh, draws a distance between herself and her mother right however uh, this distance takes on a woeful note in the in the ending of this uh, poem because we get to know that her mother was no more her mother uh, deceased right okay now uh, next she says and the sea 
which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet okay now after uh, appreciating the sweetness uh, uh, that defines her mother's beautiful face surely shifts her poetic gaze onto the sea now she she uh, she uh, tries to establish a comparison of her of 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 uh, her mother uh, with the sea right so she shifts her poetic gaze uh, onto the sea that and casually remarks on you know how how endless water body has not changed much over the time right so does the sea here symbolizes eternity against the infinite vastness of which human life appear even more evanescent in comparison right so on one hand sea which is eternal on the other hand human life which is uh, evanescent or which is uh, non uh, permanent or transient or short lived right and uh you know this evanescence this transience of human lives is touched upon further uh, when the poet mentions how um, the sea washed their uh, washed the three sisters terribly transient feet okay so terribly transient transient we know which is short lived right and terribly uh, is used as an intensifier uh, here okay so terribly is intensifying the the quality of transience okay so the what is terribly transient feet uh, uh, are ter terribly transient right so washed their terribly transient feet right so uh, here it is um, uh, it means that human life is transient right but not feet right so this poetic device is transferred epithet which means that uh, uh, you know um, the, the transferred epithet is a device wherein a noun is made to take on the attribute of the human the noun is associated to so here the noun um, uh, you know feed is associated to the transient so rather uh, what is transient it is human life which is transient not not feed right so feed is associated to transient so that is transferred epithet here so over here the girls feet are called transient because it is their own lives that are transient due to the universal reality that every living soul has a shelf life right with its time cut out on earth a reality reduce that reduces humans to a transient presence in this world so this was transferred epithet now coming to the second stanza of this poem right so this uh, stanza deals with the second phase wherein uh, you know narrator's mother is now a middle-aged lady and both narrator and her mother are looking at the photograph and mother is giving us the details of the photograph right so uh, i'll read the lines some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed us for the beach so who is the speaker here speaker is mothers uh, sorry narrators mother okay so she would laugh at the snapshot that means mother laughed at the snapshot and what did she say she said oh look look at the photograph you know how they dressed us for the beach how our parents dressed us for the beach and we are looking so funny and so hilarious right so in this line the poet remembers uh, fondly that uh, how her mother would laugh at the probably hilarious way in which she and her sisters had been dressed for the beach and you know this seemingly casual laughter has meaning below the surface it happens when we grow older and are made to become mature and serious over time we often outgrow and you know tend to forget how even such small events were accompanied with efforts to dress up right so this casual remark of the mother that poet shares with us it emboldens the underlying current of nostalgia over the things and right then the next line the sea holiday was her past mine is her laughter so the sea holiday where in mother was 12 years old when the photograph was killed that was mother's past and what was poet's past poet's past was when her mother was alive right so this then the here in these lines the poet draws the contrast between the two pasts this poem is flit between right so one of the mothers and one of shelley's right so the mother's past was enshrined in the photograph right representing her youthful days when when the when the poet's past was you know while the uh, poet's past comprises a time when she had her mother's laughter that would brighten up the days right and it's really interesting to note here how how both the past presented in the poem have laughter 
and happiness in them. So the next line, both rye with the labored ease of loss, right? So labored, labored ease, it's a beautiful combination of words and both rye, rye is, uh, you know, humorous and sarcastic smile. So why, who, who smiles, right? That we will get to know now. Okay, so this, uh, you know, uh, you know the, act, the action of smiling at the photograph, you know, this serves to ratify the theme of loss, right? That is then presented in the next sentence, in, in this sentence that with the labored ease of loss, right? They, they both write, both who both? Mother and daughter, both are, you know, giving a smile just to pacify their emotions of loss. Right. So labored here, labored ease here is an oxymoron that represents the difficulty and struggles one has to go through to arrive at the point where, you know, accepting loss and death becomes possible and a part of our life. So please underline this uh, labored ease. This is oxymoron. Okay. Yes. So in this labored ease that that turns even the happiest laughter filled with uh, filled memories, Rai with tinging, uh, you know, tinging them with uh, with uh, with emotions of pain and loss. So this smile has a tinge of both pain as well as loss. Right now, the last stanza and last and final stanza. Now she's been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived so now the poetess is saying now she has been dead who is dead mother is dead so this is a third phase of this poem where which is the present time when uh, when the poetess penned down this poem and now the mother was already dead for 12 years okay and of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It silence silences, right? So in this, uh, in these lines, the poet finally reveals that uh, the subject of the photograph, that is the mother, she has been dead for about 12 years, right? The same age she was when the photograph had been taken, right? And this painful universe circumstance of loss to death that all humans invariably experience in their lives has, has rendered her without words. And that is why she says it's silence, silences. So silence of the situation silences her, right? So this is silence is given human attribute, right? So this is which poetic device is it? This is personification so she says it silence silences so the poet is speechless because once a daughter has lost her mother to death there is nothing that can be said about a loss which is so deep so painful and so grave and what this sentence implies is that even the best of the poets sometimes fail to give exact expression to such brutal pain hence what is the best way for the poet to do justice to this pain is just mentioning that it's silence, the silence of this situation, silence of this circumstance, right, silences, right. So this is because, you know, the dictionary probably does not have enough words to lend proper articulation to such pain, to such pain of loss of mother, right. And then like the poet, one has to take resort to nostalgia and fond memories of the past to soothe their hurting self, right? So this memory, within a memory trope, right? So one, one memory when her mother was alive and another memory when mother was a child, right? So there are two, two pasts, two memories mentioned, right? So this memory within a memory trope is a beautiful way to strengthen the theme of nostalgia that defines the poem. A nostalgia that takes on a painful tone when the poet has to once again uh, come to terms with the fact that her mother who once was a beautiful, sweet and a young girl in the photograph, she is gone. She has departed now, right? So the poem makes us think about the presence of nostalgia in our lives and the labored ease with which we teach ourselves to accept loss and pain. Right. So doesn't this poem raise some comfortable, uh, uncomfortable questions about our own respective journeys of uh, first losing, you know, and then accepting the consequent, uh, uh, consequent void in our lives, isn't it? Now, I hope you have understood this poem thoroughly and I discuss the poetic devices side by side. Right. Now, let's come to the analysis. 
analysis part, right? So poetic devices I have already discussed with you. Allusion in the first line, the usage of cardboard, right? Then alliteration, uh, one, two, three, four, fifth line stood still and in the last line, silent silences. Okay, transferred epithet I already explained, terribly transient feet, right? Oxymoron, labored ease. Then personification, silent silences, right? Silence, capital S is used. So silence is given human attribute, right? And the silent silences is a paradox as well. How? Because it is contradictory statement, right? Silence, how? otherwise how can silence, silence, right? Silence it sil itself is uh, silence. It itself is uh, uh, without uh, any, uh, without any voice, right? So, this is contradictory statement as silence itself refers to the act of being silent. Okay, now uh, theme of this poem, right? So the theme of this poem is transience of human life, right? It deals with the loss of separation, pangs of loneliness, loneliness as in after losing uh, your uh, near and dear ones, how, how one's, uh, one feels, right? And the whole poem underlines the theme of nostalgia. Right? Moreover, man is mortal, right? And has a transitory relationship uh, to his surroundings. Okay. And now coming to the mood. So the predominant mood throughout the poem is of nostalgia, right? Now the final thing that is the structure of the poem, right? It's, it's written in blank words. No rhyme scheme is followed and it's divided into three stanzas. So that's it from my side. I hope you have understood this poem thoroughly. Fine. Thank you so much. And if you have liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.